More than 40 years ago, these fingers picked the guitar for Elvis's first record, That's All Right Mama. Scotty Moore remembers the good old days. Elvis was uh, just like uh, with me, like a younger brother or the kid next door. He and drummer DJ Fontana were with the Blue Mountain Boys, the King's backup band from 55 to 68. As he passed away, I hadn't seen any young guys coming up that could even get close to him yet. But sooner or later, there could be another kid come out of left field. Now the two are reliving their rock and roll heyday with all the King's men. It's Moore and Fontana, joined by guest musicians who play on different songs. Here we see the guitarist for Los Lobos at a sound check. More than a dozen artists will sit in with the King's men to give us a feel for the early days of rock and roll. But we didn't know what it was. We're just playing something we like to play. The crowd gets so loud, the best way I can describe it is like when you when you dive into the water and you hear the uh, phasing, the rush of the water, and it would get so loud that it would just cancel out uh, all, the, all the sound on stage. Actually, on most songs, if we couldn't hear him, we'd know where he was at by his body language. And that's therefore I coined the phrase we're probably the only band that I know literally directed by an ass. I was just going to work that couple tunes with him, you know. So they come back a couple weekends that I'd worked every weekend, you know, with them. And uh, one day they was going to go to Texas for four days. And they called, said, you want to go? I said, yeah. So I went to these four dates in Texas and said, well, I'm going to have some more dates. I, you know, if, if we start working some, you want to do this? I said, yeah. So that's kind of an accidental thing that happened. So I just stayed on. Yeah. As long as we're having some fun doing it, then it's cool. I'm just starting. Fun begin yeah. any minute. <laughs> Scotty had left the playing part of the music business when he left the Elvis organization in 1968. And when he left it, he wasn't kidding. It wasn't a play-like thing. He really left it. Uh, I came to work here, and he was had recently sold his studio, which was Music City Recorders, was doing all of his engineering here at the studio where I worked. He was our biggest booker. He used more time than anyone else did. I say I had no earthly idea that I would be on stage with Scotty Moore in Memphis, Tennessee celebrate uh, Elvis's birthday. I think the year was 1992. One day there was a man sitting in my office who was visiting from uh, Tampa, Florida, and uh, Scotty came in to book some time, and I said, Ed Saris, this is Scotty Moore. Uh, and they shook hands and talked a minute or two. Scotty booked his time and left. And after he left, the man said, is that the real Scotty Moore? And I said, well, that's his name. And he says, is he the Scotty Moore that played behind Elvis? And I said, no, he's an engineer here in the studio. And the guy did his business, and then he left. Well, in the meantime, one of the owners of the studio was Mort Thomason, and he had been sitting in my office the entire time. And after uh, Ed left, Scotty, uh, Mort said, Scotty will dance at your next three or four weddings. And I said, why? He said, for telling that guy he wasn't with Elvis. That was the first time that I knew that Scotty played a guitar or had ever played with Elvis. And I was an Elvis fan. <laughs> and I'd met Scotty in the 70s. And I asked him at that point in time why he hadn't played in so long. And he kind of hem hauled around and didn't really give me an answer. Um, but we, uh, we kind of struck up a, a friendship that night in 1992. This is, this is a good part of this whole story because at one time or another, Scotty and DJ both had uh, decided just not ever to have anything to do with this again. They were doing sessions in town and he'd had studio experience and he and Neil had owned a studio together at one time. And uh, Neil and Gordon especially had tried to get Scotty to come out and do some guitar playing and he was convinced nobody wanted to hear him. He said, they won't remember me. But he didn't realize that he was the foundation of Presley because he took him to all those first shows and made him known to start with. Well, DJ got to the point that he didn't know whether he would be, uh, could do anything like that or not. But we finally convinced uh, Scotty a little while after DJ got to going uh, to go to England with us because nobody knew him over there and if, if they didn't like him at least it wasn't at home so uh, we took him to England with us and when he walked on that stage he was nervous he'll tell you because uh, 
He didn't know what to expect. And when he walked on that stage, and those kids over there saw him, had a packed house, yep. the place came apart. They and and mm -hmm. the day after that, Scotty was organizing the tours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you go in there, you, there's a little bit of tension. For, I think we was, talk about, we was talking about that actually this morning. It lasted maybe 10 minutes until everybody got, you know, talking, you know, cutting up and having a good time. Then it's like playing with anybody else. You're just going in and have a good time, and we all do the best we can. Yeah. Yeah. He's got this thing in mind about his sound, which is... In a way, I just feel like it, we are, uh, in some small way, filling the gap that uh, Elvis left. You know, left. You're not, not much. I must tell you, we had a great time here. These guys started out as my icons, now they're my pals. <laughs> yeah. And we're not going to get rid of each other. I hope not. And we really appreciate the hospitality. Uh, you have uh, been... It's a real pleasure having you guys. Well, I'm coming back. I'm going to see you uh, every chance we get. I'll tell you what, why don't you come back now? We well, just won't leave. Hey, all right. <laughs> well, all right. There you go. <laughs> hey, Ro. You will do that middle part, though, won't you? What's that? You will do that middle part, won't you? Well, I mean, that's the solo. No, I'll do it, but I was hoping you would do it. Sure, I know you do it. You got it, you got it mangled right on that. It fits. It really does. Yeah. I'll give it to you, but, that, you know, that, that that's, that's your part. No, it's... <laughs> I'll try it. Yes, because well, you did it so. I never do it that simple. I can't do it. <laughs> you got it. Just feels perfect. All right. <laughs> should find someone new Someone that's good for you Not one that does you wrong With me you don't belong I know that I'm to blame I'm from England, right? Live just outside of London. And the only radio station that played at night, because the BBC shut down real early, but there was a station out of Luxembourg, which is run as an English station, right? And they would go later. But it was terrible reception, you know, I mean, it would be, you'd be carrying the radio all around your fucking room, you know, and they'd try and then it would be going in and out. And when that, there was Heartbreak Hotel, that's how I met Scotty Moore. As simple as that. And I'm running, and he keeps fading out on me, and I'm running around the room. <laughs> and uh, and basically, it was that uh, Scotty. Scotty was the one that, that turned me on to the thing of 
when I suddenly knew what it is I really wanted to do. You know, it's like uh, I can't imagine what it is like in life to go through through it without doing what it not doing what you want to do, you know, because uh, I got lucky and Scotty was one of the cats that made me lucky. It's amazing, they're just so down to earth and we're pals, you know, it's like we've known, e known each other forever, you know. One night during the Steel Wheels tour, Keith and I spent a whole night in my hotel room with uh, Scotty, swapping licks, but Keith wouldn't lend me my guitar, which he was playing. And I had two guitars, Scotty had one and Keith had the other, and I'm saying, let me play it. Keith's going, go away, get your own guitar. And I'm saying, it is my guitar. And he's saying, get out of my room. I said, it's not your room, it's my room, you know. And uh, I learned a lot by watching that night. I, I copped a lot of um, Scotty's licks. We just, uh, we felt like he did them dirty. And all of us did. We was all kind of spread around Memphis down there that he was doing them dirty, you know. And so then people started telling him, you know, that, well, man, I'll tell you one thing, without DJ and Scotty, you'd have never made it. Without DJ and Bill Black, said that sound was what, what sold the records. That was that sound. Not just your voice. I mean, your voice is a good voice, but, you know, but you wouldn't have made it without them. It was so different. And Scotty's guitar picking and, and Bill slapping. It was just so completely different that, that uh, it's what made the record. And so everybody was getting on to him about that, and he didn't like that. I think that's why he, that's why he told Parker to put him back on a salary. Bands today, if they can, uh, you know, get half the rocking sound that, that they did. I bet, you know, they didn't play very loud either. But it certainly made a, a lasting impression. And, and without them making that sound, without Scott and D, without Scott and Bill making that sound that they made on that first record, I guarantee, I don't think he'd, he'd just been another singer around Memphis. I really believe that. Well, you couldn't help but notice. I yeah. mean, Scotty, you know, he stood out pretty much. He had a, his own style. It's definitely his own style, and it was uh, talk about the slap that you know. Yeah, right. I I've always used uh, delays on my guitar, which when I was just a local guitarist, not doing anything, and even to this day, people are kind of freaked out by it a bit, you know, just like, why would you do that? But, um, you know, I heard it on those on those early recordings. There was a slap on things, and the, a bit of what they call rockabilly, you know, had this kind of slap to it, this delay slap and thing, and it was a, it affected us a lot, you know, and, and using the tube equipment that they used back then, things like that, all that affected the records they made. But Scotty's, you know, style and stuff, it was very clean and it was to the point and full of energy and sure, everybody dug that and everybody wanted, uh, well, everyone that I was close to wanted to have used that influence somehow in their playing. Yeah, the thing that I borrowed from, from him that I still use is that I, I always use a slap echo on my guitar whenever I play. It's like the only effect I use. Just into this, into the, into this little box that makes it go, dun -dun -dun -dun. <laughs> and that's really to copy the sort of atmosphere that is in Scotty Moore's sound, you know, that I heard. Yeah. But I, you know, I've got a lead singer and he's still alive. He's <laughs> changing the schedule. You know? <laughs> What's his name? I can't remember. I told you I don't know. I want to thank you for all the bad things that happened in my life and all the great things that happened in my life. Here, here. You caused me to do all this. Here, here. I'll no. get in trouble, won't you? Thanks for my haircut, thanks for my car, thanks for all the women. Thank you, gentlemen. Hey, Mr. Moore. Mr. Fontana, the hillbilly cats, what can you say? The best rock and that's the greatest rock and roll band in the world. Because there wouldn't be any others without them. See ya. Give thanks, give praises.